How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, aka Dr. Calcagno. I'm a second year family medicine resident working and studying here in Canada, finishing up my second month of my rural medicine rotation. What we're going to be doing today is taking a look at the 2023, the most recent match data that we have for residency matching, the CARMS match data, because a lot's changed in the last year. I do like to take a look at the statistics every single year, but high levels, match rates are down, application numbers overall are up, and we are still in a family doctor crisis that continues to get worse as time goes on. So buckle in. If you find it helpful, feel free to smash the like button. But we got a lot of stuff to talk about here today. And just now at the onset of the video, I would really love to hear from everyone watching this video today. Why do you think that this is, you know, the fourth year I've been taking a look at this data right now? And it seems like the problems that we continue to identify aren't actually getting any better. What are some solutions that you have to offer? And what stands out to you the most about the data that we're going to be going over today? So the first thing that we need to talk about are the three distinct categories of applicants to the Canadian system when you are applying to get into residence residency here. The biggest portion of applicants come from the CMG applicants. These are the Canadian medical graduates, people that graduated from a Canadian medical school. The next category is the USMGs or the American trained medical graduates that are now applying for residency here in Canada. And then the last part is the IMGs or the international medical graduates. This is anyone who trained outside of a mainland American or Canadian school. Now, one thing to know for people that may not be familiar with the concept is that depending on the program you're applying to and whether it's the first iteration or the second iteration, there are quotas for different types of applicants. There are IMG reserved positions, there are CMG reserved positions, and when we talk about the numbers, you always need to keep that in mind based on the perspective of whatever program it is that you're interested in. So now let's get to the numbers. Starting with the CMG applicants, there were 3,050 registrants and then 2,992 final applicants. That means that more than 3,000 people originally signed up and then through either dropping out or not being able to file the paperwork on time, not completing the application, you end up with a final number of about 2,992 applicants overall. For the American MD graduates, there were 22 that made it all the way through the process. And then for the IMGs, it was about 1,550 as according to the CARM statistics. Now I spoiled a pretty big piece of this video at the onset because I didn't want to clickbait anyone. But the big problem that we're seeing with this year's cycle is that match rates are down overall. And looking at this before we even progress to the next set of data, total application numbers are up. We have about an additional 40 CMGs that have applied. An additional three USMGs. Not many Americans want to come to Canada for residency, but there are an additional 200 IMG applicants to our residency programs this year. Now, this brings me to my first piece of information that I want to introduce, my first opinion on, on looking at all of this data here. But as time goes on, there are many people in the general public and students that are applying for medical school that are advocating for increased number of spaces in medical school. And certainly there are even more spaces to be coming. There is a brand brand new medical school that should be announced. I believe the start date is going to be for 2025, but it doesn't matter how many medical students we are getting into medical school. If we don't have increased numbers of residency spots, then it doesn't necessarily do anyone any good. And that's why for a while now, I've been talking about how the answer to the Canadian doctor crisis is not just to put more people into medical school, but to really come about it from a few different ways. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. So in the first iteration of the match, the CMG match rate was 93.5%. You contrast that to last year, it was about 93.7%. USMGs actually matched better this year. Their overall match rate was about 86.7% compared to 68.8% last year but then finally for IMGs match rate fell this year by about 10% overall match rate in the first iteration was 72.3% compared to 82.9% last year now where the percentages get a little bit worse in my opinion is actually the second iteration where overall the match rate for CMGs in the second iteration this year was 60.6% compared to 73.3% last year uh, and for IMGs was 39% match rate in the second iteration compared to last year's match rate of 60 66.7%. So it's a huge change for IMGs and for CMGs in the second iteration. One final piece that I'll say about IMGs, and I did go over this in my data last year too when I presented it, but at first glance, the IMG match rate looks really, really bad. When you dive into it a little bit more though, you'll see that it is still worse than last year, but is not as bad as it is originally presented. Overall, the match rate for IMGs that graduated this year in Canada was 80%. 80% of all of the IMGs that graduated this year did match in Canada. And every single year that you've been out of medical school without actually being in a clinical context, your match rate gets worse and worse and worse over time. That's for a few different factors, but it is not 
as bad as it looks for people that are IMGs that are coming in assuming they are applying that very same year that they graduated. Now more on that to come in just a little bit but let's go to the other end of the spectrum right now and talk about the people that matched really really well and talk about the most competitive specialties to match into and what your chances were of getting into some of those if you were interested in them. Our top five most competitive specialties from this recent cycle were plastic surgery, ophthalmology, vascular surgery, dermatology, and head and neck surgery. Those were our top five and when you compare them to their match percentage last year. Well, I'll read this year's numbers and I'll have it up on the board so you can see how it compares. Plastic surgery this year, 0.46. So that turns into about a 46% match rate for people that were applying. Uh, ophthalmology was 0.49. Vascular surgery, 0.52. Dermatology, 0.54. And then head and neck surgery was 0.56. Now, a couple things that are very important to remember, but here in Canada, when you're applying for residency, there are no board scores involved. There's no step two score. There's no nothing else other than your narrative that you have from medical school, your experiences and what electives you chose to do, and then your research after applications, your extracurriculars, and then the letters of reference that you get from the different specialists that you will have shadowed throughout medical school. Now, for anyone who is really interested in one of these more competitive specialties, just know that on average, these programs are so competitive because the size of them is so small. There are not many applicants that get into any program or any particular school because per a population of 100,000 people, let's say, you don't necessarily need 100 vascular surgeons, you just need a small number but of all of the bigger programs, internal medicine, family medicine and such, pediatrics, when you have people that no longer want those programs and they then get funneled to some of the more competitive programs, well, that just makes things more competitive for everyone. And just keep that in mind in, in a second. So now we'll talk about the least competitive medical specialties when it comes to residency applications. I'll have both sets of data this year and last year up on the screen to show you. But our top five least competitive for this year was hematological pathology, medical microbiology, public health, family medicine, and general pathology. If you keep looking down that list, you actually see that internal medicine was a program this year that had more spaces than there were applicants that were interested in it. Side note, by the way, if you were a student that is interested in hematological pathology, you are you are winning. You could go to any school you want, basically, in the country. The, the applicant pool is so small that we need you, and it's a great time to be a hematological pathologist you get open range and a very large option base in terms of applying to where you want to go and now finally we get to the crux of the problem or what i personally am identifying as a major problem that if we could fix somehow um everyone wins everyone benefits as a result this doesn't just affect one particular group of people but i'll show you some data up on the screen right now you'll see two things number one that over the course of the last 10 years, family medicine as a discipline has become less and less desirable by applicants. People don't want family medicine. They're choosing to not apply to family medicine. This effect is worse this year than last year and continues to get worse as time goes on. And furthermore, at the end of the second iteration, there were still 100 unfilled spots for family medicine. This is so many spots that if only these 100 spaces were completely filled for family medicine people wanting to go into that specialty, then at the end of the second iteration, there would be a 100% match rate of everyone that advanced through. The match rate overall would have improved so drastically that many people wanting to go into certain professions might have actually gotten it. It is for this reason that I've said on the channel multiple times now that in my opinion, it is not the answer to Canada's healthcare crisis to just put more people into medical school or to open up more spaces for certain programs like the Queen's Family Medicine specific program. We'll touch more about that in a little bit because at the end of the day, if you make it to the end of your program and you still don't want to go into family medicine, we are seeing people would rather go unmatched than work in that profession. On top of that, when these additional people do enter the medical school system and they are choosing to go into the more competitive programs, then you are overcrowding those programs and reducing the overall match rate for people that are interested in those specialties. The fact of the matter remains that you can't force an MD to do a job, to do a specialty that they're really not passionate about. And it seems like that has been the proposed solution. We as a medical society have come together and identified this problem and for years now have told people that the answer to the solution was to reinforce the stereotype that family medicine doctors are overworked, underpaid, it's a lousy profession to get into. And now some of the proposed solutions I feel like are, are moving further and further away than what we should be doing. 
the Queen's Medical School, and this is nothing against Queen's, has now attempted to, to directly address this program by starting a family medicine specific program where they will have 20 spots that are going to be open where to the students that match in, they will be locked into a four year medical school degree and then two years afterwards directly into family medicine residency. This is the first time that this has been seen here in Canada. I'm not sure about everywhere in the world. But what happens if at the end of that program, let's say you make it four years in, and I don't necessarily know how this is gonna work because the program hasn't been around for that long yet, but what is stopping those people from going four years, getting their MD, writing the American exams, and then going somewhere else and applying to the States if they're locked out of the Canadian residency? And then furthermore, let's say you're stuck here and you have to finish all the way till the end. If you don't want to practice as a family doctor on the other side of your residency, then what's stopping people from pursuing extra training in anesthesiology or emergency medicine or just getting into pharma or any sort of other job? There are so many different positions that are available to uh, MDs and graduates of a residency program, especially here in Canada. We need to be doing everything that we can to incentivize family medicine as a specialty, to get people excited about working these positions and everyone will benefit. The people that want to be surgeons will have less competition because other people will be family doctors. And that's the way this ideal is supposed to work. Let's incentivize the programs a little bit more. Let's teach people how to be successful and financially responsible and have a lifelong career that is sustainable in family medicine and not just lock people into professions so that at the end of the day, they might not want to do. All right, everyone, and, and that's going to be today's video. This channel is never doom and gloom. All of the data that I'm presenting here today is, is just to be realistic and to give you a little bit of my thoughts, having seen this data roll in and continue to get worse year after year, uh, but now seeing some positives as well. We have the BC family physicians that just got a substantial change in the way that things are run down there. There's a raise associated with it and different ways going about in terms of office management. And, and there's a lot of positive changes that are happening. I would just like to see those come to the rest of Canada and continue to advance in that direction. To everyone that's applying this year, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, one piece of advice that I'll give you then people ask me is that if you really, really want a specialty, then it doesn't matter how competitive it looks at first glance. Yes, you need to parallel plan and, and your electives and the way you shape your application, but give it your best shot and, and be realistic with yourself. You, you can get it, but if you don't and you end up somewhere else, healthcare, I believe, is still an amazing profession to get into and you're going to make it work regardless of what specialty you end up in. Um, but I wish you all the best of luck. And guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Leave any questions, comments, concerns you have uh, down below. See you all in the next one. Everyone take care.